Monocytes are the next leukocyte we're going to talk about. And just kind of as a refresher of what monocytes look like, here's our neutrophil right here. And the neutrophil has very neutral cytoplasm. It's that kind of pinkish color. And then a lymphocyte is smaller than the neutrophil, and it has a very round nucleus and a scant amount of basophilic cytoplasm. And so monocytes are bigger than both of these cells. And I'm sure if you did your leukocyte differentials in lab, you realize it can be kind of hard to tell monocytes from other cells sometimes. And that's because they have the greatest changes in morphology. They can sometimes have an ovoid or even round nucleus, which makes them look lymphoid. And they can have more of a lobulated nucleus that makes them look like they're actually um, neutrophils of granulocyte lineage. The difference is their cytoplasm is more basophilic, so kind of bluer cytoplasm, which you can see here. And they often have punctate clear vacuoles, which is what these little dots are supposed to recommend. And that's kind of a vacuole there and a vacuole there. The chromatin of the nucleus is a little bit more purple and dark purple, which I think is a really subtle change. And monocytes actually become tissue macrophages, which also have a lot of variability in morphology, which makes it sometimes hard to tell macrophages from other cell types. So monocytes are made in the bone marrow, uh, similar to neutrophils, and they are under the influence of granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor, similar to neutrophils as well. And they actually come from a common like stem cell, but they eventually differentiate into different cell types. And monocytes, of course, are mononuclear cells, and neutrophils are considered granulocytes, and that has to do with the granules in the cytoplasm. So the difference between monocytes and neutrophils is that monocytes have no storage pool. Remember, neutrophils have a nice storage pool. And they have no storage pool because monocytes mature in the blood. And once they're in blood, they go uh, similar to neutrophils. So there's our blood vessel. And we have our monocytes that there is a marginal pool of monocytes. These are all my monocytes. And there's a circulating pool similar to neutrophils. So monocytes, similar to neutrophils, leave the circulation via margination, and they go into tissues. And so here's our monocyte. So they go into tissues, and when they go into tissues, they live for months. Remember, neutrophils, when they go into tissues, live for about two days, approximately, depending on what is like what their actual need is. So in tissues they live for months and when they're in tissues they're called macrophages. And in tissues of course they phagocytize materials and agents and they present them to other inflammatory cells and immune cells such as lymphoid cells and present antigen to them and deal with various um, diseases in the body. So we only clinically recognize monocytosis. Monocytopenia is not something that we worry about. It's not considered clinically relevant, nor do we ever characterize it. So if monocytes are decreased, we ignore them. So the causes of monocytosis, um, which are of clinical, that is of clinical concern, the first one is stress. And of course, this, as we talked about with neutrophils and lymphocytes, is cortisol mediating. And this can be endogenous or exogenous cortisol corticosteroids. And remember with monocytes, excuse me, with neutrophils, there were two causes for the increase in neutrophils. One was decreased margination and one was actual release from the storage pool. Because monocytes don't have a storage pool, the only real cause that we see of monocytes increasing is a decrease in margination, meaning that you have more monocytes in the circulating pool, and that's due to downregulation of inflammatory, or excuse me, of integrins and adhesion molecules. So that cause, again, is decreased margination or shift from the circulating, excuse me, from the marginal pool to the circulating pool. So the second cause is inflammation. And inflammation, again, remember there's the shared progenitor, and they're both stimulated by granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor. So when neutrophils are stimulated for production, monocytes also going to be stimulated. The difference is the amount of monocyte production in the bone marrow versus neutrophils. So there's many, many, many more neutrophils in the marrow than there are neutrophils being produced. So you see a smaller increase in monocytes. So that's one part of it. 
Uh, the other part of it is that there are certain types of inflammation that are more likely to uh, increase your monocytes. And since these are later to the inflammatory process, uh, we tend to see them increase more with chronic inflammation. However, you can still see it in acute inflammation. It doesn't rule it out if you see it in acute inflammation. So how do you tell the difference? Well, sometimes you can't. If there's both stress and inflammation on a leukogram, then you don't know which is causing it. Uh, if there's no lymphopenia, though, so if there's no indication of stress, then we think that it's more likely inflammation causing the increase in monocytes. In terms of degree of increase, inflammation can be any degree increase. So it doesn't, there's no magic number. For stress, I usually think it's going to be less than one and a half to two times the upper reference limit uh, if it's just stress alone. And it depends on what your reference limit is. So the last cause um, is something called compensatory monocytosis, which really happens with inflammation. And we see this with neutropenia. And again, it has to do with the shared progenitor, and you always have some need for neutrophils in the body. So if you're very neutropenic, regardless of the cause, your body's going to want you to make more neutrophils, even if you can't make them, and that's going to stimulate monocyte production. And so you can see an increase in monocyte secondary. So it may be compensatory, and it, may, it usually also has an inflammatory cause. And so that's it for monocytes. Um, we're going to move on to eosinophils.